Okay, so let's talk about World's Strongest Man day two. So day one was really good, but there's a few things I want to talk about firstly. Firstly, uh, the reason why there were some surprises on the deadlift was because of the the layout of the situation. So by that, what I mean is some athletes were wearing deadlift socks and the platform was absolutely boiling hot. Now, in Sacramento, it's about, it was about 105 degrees, it's absolutely boiling. What a stupid place to put on World's Strongest Man event. So some athletes were complaining that their feet were absolutely burning up on that platform. Uh, now the reason why Konstantin Janashia didn't do too well is because he tweaked his back on one rep with pretty bad technique. Um, and the reason why Martins Lysis didn't do too well overall, even though he, I believe he did win the group, was because he realized he couldn't use the hook grip because his hands were too swollen. And then he found out that he couldn't roll the bar. So that put him off for sure. Now, in regards to the loading race, my personal opinion, and that's what it is, my personal opinion, is that the um, the distance of travel was too short. Okay, so what Colin did is reduce the distance of travel to try and encourage other athletes to do the last few implements, to pick up the sandbags, the kegs, because it's a shorter distance of travel. Just give it a go, um, but increase the number of implements that you need to use, you need to do. So that's what he did. He reduced the distance, but increased the number uh, of implements that you need to carry and load, which I think was a bad idea. I think the, the old way was better. So uh, that's my personal opinion. Obviously, this time you had, what, two sandbags. You had a cannonball, a keg, and an anvil. Um, quite a lot of stuff, and it was all pretty heavy stuff, 300 pounds, 270 pounds, 265 pounds, so heavy, um, but sh a shorter distance of travel. I don't agree with that. I think that was that was a wrong decision there, but that's my opinion. Let's move on. Day two. So day two, we had the car walk and we had the log lift for reps. I think the car walk, my personal opinion, was too light. I think it was too easy. That's my opinion. Agree or disagree with it, up to you. Now, we still got day three, which is the wrecking ball hold and the stone off. So, But we're going to talk about day two. So Tom won his group with a pretty competitive time, 14.65 seconds. Uh, Gabriel second with a very good time as well. Kevin third. Uh, Smog Stellis fourth. Andy Black fifth. And Manuel sixth. Okay, that that's not surprising. That's that's what I expected. Um, that I expected Tom to win it, and Gabriel and Kevin to be competitive in the at least in the fighting for second and third. So that wasn't surprising. I was expecting that uh, for the log lift for the group one. Uh, Tom won it by one rep. Uh, Kevin put on a great performance of seven reps. Very good, brilliant performance. And Gabriel six, uh, Smog Stellis four, and the last two guys didn't even manage one rep. So, again, this is a good group for Tom to be in. So after four events, this is the standing. So pretty much was that, that's four points for Tom, 24. Uh, Kevin is not too far off. And Gabriel third, uh, Smog Stellis fourth, and Andy Black fifth, and Manuel sixth, as I would expect. Uh, so Kevin Fares and Gabriel Rayom second and third. I think it's going to come down to those two in the stone off and Tom will go through. Uh, he doesn't have to do much, if at all, anything for day three event, uh, the the hold. So he might just go out, do one or two seconds and then boom, done, he's through. Um, so anyway, let's move on to the next group and I'll talk more about that later. So group two. Uh, a tough group to be in. Um, surprisingly, Brian Shaw straight away it pops out at you. Uh, 19 seconds down in fifth with a not a bad time, under 20 seconds. So still a very good time. But given the competitive nature of this group, um, that's not a good time for the group. Uh, Mitchell Hooper, this guy, man, what's that? I knew he would be quick. He was one of my wild cards. I didn't actually write him in as a finalist, but I did predict that he would he would mix things up a bit. I wasn't expecting him to be this competitive at his first ever World's Strongest Man. Um, I knew he was strong, but as he said, and everyone has said, it doesn't matter what you can do in the gym during training. It's what happens when you turn up and compete at a competition. That's where it counts, okay? Not in your home gym, at a competition when the pressure is on. And that's when a lot of rookies tend to make mistakes. But he has been pretty much faultless. And he even said in backstage with Terry that he slowed down 
from the car walk because he was worried about the tires hitting the floor and either throwing the the, the car off or, or making it stop completely so he held back so i don't even know what time he would have got if he was more confident and he went full pell probably under 10 seconds so that's that's incredible and mark felix 56 years of age 13.96 seconds a fantastic time now given that I, I i do believe that the car is quite light um that's still a very good time um, bobby thompson in third i did expect him to be in the top three in this event 16 seconds a competitive time uh, very well done and then we've got constantine janashia in fourth well done he's trying to make up for some lost points in day one brian shaw down in fifth and gabriel pena didn't uh he only managed to go 18.90 meters i guess that's meters uh, so not a good showing from him after a pretty strong day one so brian shaw is definitely not going to be happy with that position that's that's the standout in the, the car walk for group two i was wasn't surprised mitchell won it i, I kind of it's funny because he's gone from a possible finalist to a possible podium finisher at, at the finals <laughs> It's amazing how quickly things change in World's Strongest Man. Um, nowadays, not in the old days. Log lift. So, group two. Uh, no surprises to see Bobby Thompson winning the group. Or, or with eight reps, which is very competitive. And so, that's six points in the bag for him, which he needs in this tough group. We've got Mitchell Hooper, seven reps. That's what he needed to do, really. That's a good performance um, for a rookie. But that means he's tied on points with Brian Shaw. Um, now Brian Shaw needed to make up some points after a pretty abysmal uh, car walk performance so uh, he probably went for it there but seven reps tied points that's not really what he wants it's not a big deal for Mitchell Hooper but it is a big deal for Brian Constantine Janashia five reps solid performance Gabriel Pena one rep yikes I thought he'd do better than that and Mark Felix didn't even get one rep which is a shame uh, because he did so well in the car walk um, so that pretty much writes him out of any opportunity of making it through to the finals with uh, with that. So I, I feel for the guy. But let's move on to see where they all stand after four events. So Mitchell Hooper is leading the way. He's probably just going to go out where well, he said it himself. He's just going to go out on, a t on day three for the, the hold and just do one second, put it down. That's all he needs to do to make it through to the finals. That's what he said. Um, that's not what I said. <laughs> He said that. Um, Bobby Thompson's second, okay, 17 points. Uh, Brian Shaw, third. Uh, Gabriel, fourth on 11 points. Constantine Janashia trying to make up some, some points. Fifth, Mark Felix last in sixth. So it's really going to come down to most likely Bobby Thompson and Brian Shaw for the stone off. And Mitchell will make it through to the finals. This is what I said. Uh couple of weeks ago about brian shaw um everyone the brian shaw cult and the fan the groupies were like oh how dare you talk you talk bad about brian shaw how dare you say anything about the uh, the demigod that is brian shaw but i said he's going to struggle to make it through to the finals gone are the days where he just cruised into the finals you know he just gave it 50 percent and he made it into the finals I said to everyone, this is this could potentially be his last World's Strongest Man. Um, there's just way too much young talent coming through the ranks, like Mitchell Hooper, that it's just getting to the point that does he need to do this anymore? He will probably never win that fifth title. The time has passed now. Um, and he doesn't need the money. He doesn't need the brand exposure. Uh, so I don't understand why he would come back next year. But that's just my opinion. That's not fact. Uh, you can agree with that, you can disagree with that, as I always say. So it's going to come down to Bobby and Brian. Uh, now, Brian is a very good stone lifter, so it's kind of Bobby's the most likely, good old Bobby, uh, is probably the most likely to not make it through to the finals out of the two of them. And Brian Shaw will, will make it to the finals. Uh, depends how well they do on the hold. So we'll have to, the wrecking ball hold. So I, I would say that that's probably Brian's event to do well in. And I know that he's going to give it, go out there for that event and give it absolutely everything he's got. He's going to go 120% on that event because uh, he's got to claw back some valuable points that he's lost. So anyway, that's my thoughts on that. 
uh, we'll have to wait and see. This is the group I'm really looking forward to. I just wonder if Brian's going to be a casualty. We're going to see him drop out and not make it to, through to the finals. How many times has he been, like pretty much since 2010, he's, I'm positive it's since 2010 he's made it through to every finals. That's pretty amazing. And I believe he's, been, he's made it to 13 finals now. I believe so. That just off the top of my head, doing a rough calculation based on how long I know he's been competing. I, I believe that. So, so whatever it is, he's done an incredible job throughout his career. Um, so let's move on to the next group, group three. Um, now, this, I believe, is the group of death. You can agree with that. You can disagree with that. Up to you. So uh, in the car walk, no surprises. Rob Kearney, a blistering time. Uh, 11.63 seconds, very good time. Uh, he's good at this event. I think he said with backstage with Terry Hollands that he's only in his career ever been beaten on this event twice throughout his career. So this is his event. This was his to win. I was surprised that Alexei Novikov didn't do better, but it was definitely Rob Kearney's event for sure. Now, Gregor Szymanski, what a brilliant showing. Second place, 14.26 seconds. Now, I didn't know this, but the reason why we haven't seen him in recent years is because he's been battling cancer. So what an incredible comeback to come back from cancer and competing at the top at World's Strongest Man. Absolutely fantastic job from Gregor's. Uh, Alexei Novikov, disappointing third place there. Uh, he wouldn't have wanted that. Uh, what ha what's happened to Trey Mitchell? What, what's this? What's been going on with this guy? Yikes! Uh, fourth, I thought he'd do better than that. Um, and Adam Bishop, not really, a bit disappointed actually with that performance. Uh, down in fifth, twenty-three point three eight seconds. I'm surprised at that. I thought he'd do better. Uh, and Mika Toro. Now, <laughs> this guy's an absolute giant. Uh, finish giant absolute monster so something like a car walk would definitely not suit someone of his stature so i'm surprised it was that poor of a performance just 9.50 but uh, it is what it is it's uh, it, it is what it is i'm not going to comment any more on that because i couldn't have done it so who am i to to <laughs> say bad things about him so anyway let's move on to the next event which was the log the log lift for reps uh alexi novikov won that i but had to share points for Trey Mitchell. Uh, Trey Mitchell needed to go out and do a good job. Nine reps, fantastic from both of those guys. Brilliant performance. Um, this is why it's the it's the death group. <laughs> this is why nine reps. That's that's incredible. Um, so Alexi will have to share points. That's not what he wanted, especially after not a strong performance per se on the car walk. I think he would have wanted to do better on that. Uh, so I don't think he's going to be too happy about that, knowing Alexei Novikov. And then we got uh, Trey Mitchell, yeah, nine reps. Adam Bishop, seven reps, very good performance. Obviously, he wanted to claw back some points after a pretty bad car walk. Rob Kearney, six reps. Now, he has in the past had a pretty nasty tricep injury, if, if my memory serves me correctly. Um, so that's a good showing from him. Gregor, three reps. Mika Toro, two. And there we go. So let's have a look at the standing after four four events now let's see where everyone is so uh alexi novikov pretty comfortably in the lead there he's still going to have to go out and do a good performance on the wrecking ball hold um he's not that comfortable that he can just go out there and do nothing especially in this death group adam bishop 16 points trey mitchell 15.5 rob kearney 14 gregor Szymanski 9 and mika toro 8 so it's a tough group. It's it's a very competitive group. Um, so really, I mean, from second to fourth, Adam, Trey, and Rob, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. Who's going to be the final guy to make it through to the finals in this group? I don't know. They are so close, so close. Um, it is going to be. This is this is going to be the one to watch. Who is going to be... Alexi will make it through. But who's going to be the second guy to make it through? It could be Adam. It could be Trey. It could be Rob Kearney. Personally, I think it's most likely going to be Trey Mitchell. He's got a very strong grip. But also, he is very good with the stones. So if it came down to him, Adam, on the stones, Trey would win it. So there we go. That's my thoughts on that. Agree or disagree with it? Entirely up to you. Um, so let's, uh, let's move on to the group four. Pavlo Kodiaka did a great job on the car walk. I'm not surprised, actually. This is an event that I expected him to do well at, and a very competitive time, 12.92 seconds. Martins Lysis, 
18.93. That's not too good of a time from him. I don't think he would have wanted second place there, but I'm sure his goal isn't to go out and win every event. Uh, his goal is to make it through to the final. So after doing so well on day one, I think the pressure was slightly off to, for, for day two. Uh, Gavin Bilton, brilliant job. Well done, Gavin Bilton. 23.67, which puts him in third in the car walk. That's fantastic because a lot of people criticize his endurance, his fitness, his stamina, call him a bit of a, ch a tubby strongman, only good at really static stuff. Uh, he's not in shape for strongman. He gets a lot of criticism like that, um, but he's been working really hard on his fitness uh, in recent months, so that's paid off. Uh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Uh, I always tell people, if you put in the work, it will pay off. And he's done just that. What is going on with Maxime, Maxime Boudreau? I thought he'd do well in the car walk. Uh, 49.28 seconds. I'll have to find out what happened there. I'll have to go away, watch his YouTube, and do some more research into what happened there. Because uh, that, that was surprising to see him all the way down in fourth. So anyway, let's move on to the, the log. Uh, let's see what happened here. So... That's more like it. <laughs> Maxime Boudreau. Uh, six reps. Uh, uh, ten reps for 6.10 ten reps. Wow. This is the first time I've seen this. I'm reacting to this live. Ten reps. Wow. He is a very good log presser. Uh, that's very good. That's just what he needed. And Martins least it's nine reps. Brilliant job. Uh, but he has to share points with Pablo Kodiaka. So day two hasn't gone as well as day one for Martins. Maybe that's because he's held back slightly. He hasn't because he's done so well on day one but to share points like that that's not really what he wants but it's not a, it's not a bad performance and brilliant job from Pablo Kodiaka to get nine reps there Gavin Bilton that's good seven reps from Gavin well done so interesting this group is shaping up to be very competitive as well so I want to see where everyone is after four events now let's check this out so uh, Shane Flowers has had to withdraw that was kind of inevitable I knew that was coming I'm um, not surprised, but a massive shame. This guy hasn't been, what What was it? He said he's only been in Strongman for, what, 300 days or something competing? And he's already at World's Strongest Man. So he's definitely got a lot of promise, a lot of talent, but um, just had an injury. I believe it was something to do with his foot. Again, I'm just, that was through the grapevine. I heard that, but he's definitely out now, which is a shame. But it's a positive for Pablo Kodiaka and for sure, because those two are always fighting it out. Um, so Martins Lise is 21.5 points. That puts him in a great position for day three. Uh, Maxine Boudreau, 17 points. So that's pretty competitive. But look, only 0 0.5 separating Pablo Kodiaka and Maxine Boudreau. Uh, that's very, very close. And Gavin Bilton, 15. You know, as I always say, everyone was telling me he's never going to do well. He's going to do shit. Uh, he's not. He's not right for strong man. He's not. He shouldn't be at world strongest man. People have been literally saying negative things like that. Um, but to be on 15 points just behind uh, Pavlo Kordiaka by 1.5 points, that's very good. So realistically, uh, given the event tomorrow, the uh, day three, um, the uh, wrecking ball hold, and then the stone off. It's most likely going to be Maxime Boudreau going through to the finals. Unless something goes terribly wrong for Maxime uh, in, the, in the hold or maybe an injury, something like that. It's going to be most likely him. But Pavlo is going to put up a fight. He's not going to be making that easy at all. So let's move to the last group, the easy group. Um, I'm sure some people are not going to like that I said that. So... Uh, just as I thought Evan would do, he went out and put performed fantastically in the car walk, a blistering time, under 10 seconds. Wow, incredible. Uh, and then we got Luke Stoltman, second, 16.65, not that competitive of a time. I thought Melch did, uh, 29.07. Coco, we got fourth with an okay time. Kelvin De Reuter, one minute. Again, this is a giant guy. This sort of event doesn't suit him at all. And Kim all the way down in last. So, um, interesting, interesting. Uh, Evan Singleton, I expected him to go out and perform fantastically in an event like this. There are not many people in the world that can beat him on a yoke walk or a car walk or something like that. He's incredibly explosive. Probably Rob Kearney rivals him in this event. Uh, but the tragic news is, I heard... 
from Terry Holland supposedly that Evan Singleton and in the news it looks like Evan Singleton is out of World's Strongest Man now with an injury so uh, just plagued by bad luck unfortunately um, so that's a shame uh, so now it's really come down to who's going to be the last guy to go through to the finals is it Ithor Melstead is it Coco uh, or is it Kelvin De Reuter not going to count Kim unfortunately uh, so let's look at the log, the log lift. I thought Melch did uh, is a good log presser, a good overhead presser. So I'm not surprised to see him in second with eight reps. That's a good showing. Luke is a fantastic overhead presser. Ten reps. I would expect that from him. Um, Coco seven reps, brilliant. Kim, wow. Okay, so Kim Lorenzen six reps. That's very competitive. Uh, Evan down with one rep, but not surprising. He had an injury at this point, I believe so. And Kelvin De Reuter, one rep. Being so tall and big, something like this sort of event wouldn't really suit him. So let's look at the standing in Group 5 after after a four event. So Luke is pulling away, like, like I expected him to do. And I thought Melstead, 16 points. Uh, Coco, 15 points. Kelvin De Reuter, 10.5. I think Evan Singleton is out now. And Kim down in ninth. Lorenzen. So it's going to come down to Coco or Ithor realistically realistically it's going to be one of those two um i'm not sure who actually it's going to be interesting it's going to be very interesting to see which one so let's have a look at what my predictions were on the 20 let's have a look at every all the groups first where, where they are after four events so tom stoltman uh, sitting pretty there kevin 18 points gabriel 16 so it's going to come down to one of those two uh, let's look at group two mitchell hooper is through as is Tom, uh, Bobby and Brian are going to be fighting it out at the stones for sure, on the stone off. Uh, group three, we've got Alexi, who will most likely be going through to the finals unless something goes terribly wrong. And it will really come down to one of these three guys, Adam, Trey or Rob. Most likely, it's going to come down to Adam and Trey. I, I think Rob isn't the best when it comes to grip. So I would most likely think that it's going to come down to Adam or Trey. Mitchell. Group four, Martins is through. Uh, it will come down to Pavla Kordiaka or Maxime Boudreau. So it's going to be one of those two. It's going to be very close, but most likely Maxime will come away as the finalist. And then group five, it's Luke's through for sure. Uh, Ithor or Coco. It's going to be one of those two guys. I'm not sure because uh, I really just want to wait and see. I don't want to make any predictions on that. So again, it looks like the Stoltman brothers are through. They had a fantastic groups. They were in the right groups to go through without having to put too much of a fight up. Uh, Luke more than Tom. Uh, so let's let's have a look at what my predictions were. Uh, so on the 22nd of May, my predictions were as follows. So Evan Singleton is out. I believe so, if the news is correct. So Paddo Dwyer is out. I can't see Constantine Genasio being a wild card now. Now, Mitchell Hooper I had as a wild card, Rob Kearney, Adam Bishop, and I thought Mel So I, I kind of knew he'd do well. I knew he'd come, it will be him in the stone off. So uh, pretty much everything there looks, I, I think I've got eight, 8 out of 10. Let's have a look at what the situation, what my predictions are today. Today is the 26th. So my predictions, the definites is Tom. Uh, Mitchell Hooper, Alexei Novikov, Martin Slesis, and Luke Stoltman. That, that's for sure. That's going to happen. Given un, some sort of injury or one of them gets COVID, that's pretty much guaranteed. Uh, the last five will be Trey Mitchell, Brian Shaw, Maxime Boudreau, Kevin, and Ithor Melstead. So that's what I believe. That's my predictions. But the wild cards, you have to be careful here. It's firstly, Bobby is uh, Gabriel uh, Rayom. He's going to put up a fight. Bobby Thompson is going to put up a fight. Adam Bishop, Pavlo Kodiaka, and Coco. So that's my predictions there for the top 10 that will make it through to the finals. And then some wild cards there who are going to fight till the bitter end. So that's my thoughts on that. Uh, let's have a quick look on how everyone performed uh, based on each group. Who was the, the, the most competitive at the events on day two. Okay, so when we look at the top two from each group in the car walk. This is the order that they performed in. So, Evan Singleton set the quickest time under 10 seconds uh, with a whopping 9.86 seconds, which is an absolutely incredible time. Uh, then we have uh, Rob Kearney, one of the 
best yoke walkers, car walkers in the world. I'm not surprised to see him in the top three overall. And then we have Mitchell Hooper, who said he was not going at 100%. He said he actually backed off a bit because he was worried about the tyres hitting the floor and just stopping the frame completely. Uh, and so he was actually a little bit cautious and, and slowed down. So I think if Mitchell Hooper was a little bit more confident, uh, he could have got under 10 seconds as well. So that's something to take into consideration. And then we got Pavlo Kodiaka, fantastic effort from him. Fourth overall in terms of t who did it the quickest. Uh, that's 12.92 seconds. Mark Felix, fantastic. 56 years of age. Incredible. 13.96 seconds. That makes him in the top five performer in the car walk. Fantastic. And Gregors coming back from battling with cancer. Uh, been around in Strongman for a very long time. Uh, a fantastic person. Great guy. 14.26. Uh, brilliant time. Tom Stoltman next up. 14.65. An okay time. Uh, Gabriel, 16.44. Luke, near the bottom, 16.65. And then Martins Elises, 18.93. The slowest out of all of them. That's uh, that's not what I was expecting at all, all the way down there. Um, I was kind of expecting Luke not to be too competitive at this. Um, but, yeah, it just goes to show that... Uh, yeah, no, we'll leave that comment out, actually. Uh, so, anyway, I was really impressed by Mark Felix in particular and, obviously, Mitchell Hooper. He was another standout for me in this event. Mitchell Hooper and Mark Felix, fantastic job. So it was quite interesting to see that Martins Lysis, maybe something went wrong on this event. Maybe he held back a little bit. I'm not sure because he did so well in day one. I don't know, but to be right at the bottom there um, is is not, not too good, uh, especially uh, considering how, how, how good he is as an overall strongman. He's good at everything. So I'm surprised by that. So uh, anyway, that was that was an interesting result. Let's have a look at the log lift for for reps. I like to say log press, so that's just me. Um, right, Luke, ten reps, no surprises. Incredibly good uh, overhead presser. Uh, Max Maxime Boudreau, ten reps again, fantastic. Martins Lysis, that's much better up there with nine reps. Alexei Novikov, nine reps. Trey Mitchell, nine reps. Tom Stoltman, uh, eight reps. Bobby Thompson, I was surprised by that. I thought this guy was going to do 10 to 10, 11, 12 reps. Uh, to see him only get eight reps, surprising. Um, but he did do well in his group, so that's six points there. That's fantastic for him. And then we got Ithor Melstead, uh, eight reps, competitive. Uh, he is a very good overhead presser. That put him in a good position in his group. Kevin Fares, seven reps. And Mitchell Hooper, right at the bottom, seven reps. So, but. Mitchell Mitchell Hooper really didn't need to go out and, and do 10, 11, 12, 13 reps. Uh, that was what he needed to do. Had to share points, but it is what it is. So it's interesting to see how they performed overall uh, in terms of the top two from each each group. So now we've got day three. Let's see what happens. I'm not going to make any predictions at all. I've said what I've said already in this video. Comment below. I want to hear your thoughts. Do comment. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on day two. Let, let me know what your thoughts are on the events. Did you, do you like the events? Do you not like the events? Uh, if so, why? And who do you think is going to be the top 10 finalists? So thanks for watching this video. Have a great day and enjoy World Strongest Man.